Welcome, welcome, chess kid fans, chess lovers everywhere. Happy holidays to you and yours. Thank you for spending it with us. I'm here with my partner in crime. I mean, my partner in chess, Tihan Chernayev. Tihan, say hello to your audience. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. And uh, we're going to finish off this decade with some fun chess. Tihan, were you even alive in the last decade? What year were you born? Uh, 2010. Okay, so this is the only decade you've ever known, is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, let me tell you what life was like in the 2000s. We used to have to dial up to get on the internet. No, okay, we'll talk about ancient history some other time. For those of you that are new to the Fun Master Mike and the Teacher Show, it works like this. First, Tihan plays a five-minute game, only on Chess Kid. I comment on his game. Then we turn the tables. I play a five-minute game while Tihan tries his best not to be too critical of an old man's moves. And then we play hand and brain, which is a really fun part because you get to see a big difference in styles between the very end game, boring oriented old man fun master Mike Chess and the super sharp tactical aggressive lines that Tihan loves to play. Uh, and I'm not shaving until I play the perfect chess game. No, just kidding. Um, we're just going to have some fun today. Go on to chesskid.com right now and make sure that you are friends with Fun Master Mike if you want to challenge me. And if you want to challenge Tihan, it's kind of the luck of the draw. Okay. Tihan, are you ready to get started? Yep. Okay. I create challenge. Great. So let's see who is the lucky person that gets to play Tihan first. Okay waiting for Tihan to get an, an accept on his challenge. Now he's got a rating of 2125, which is just about his real life rating. We, um, we may need to lower that actually to give him an opponent up, oh, but I think he found one. And here we go. Okay, so Tihan is black. And how is he gonna answer E4? Well, big thing to start out. Oh, he's gonna play the Sicilian. Okay, so he spotted his opponent 10 seconds because it's the holidays and he wanted to be a nice guy. Okay, knight c6. Now, I've actually was just about to say, I see bishop c4 so often when kids play against the Sicilian, but the bishop doesn't really belong there because the pawn on d7 can often come to d5, which Tihan has just done, and attack the bishop. Now, it's not technically the snowplow because you don't have an e and a d pawn, but the c and the d pawns, they still control a lot of center squares. And unfortunately for white, not only did he lose a bishop, but he actually lost the whole piece. Um, didn't just lose a tempo, but he lost the whole piece. Well, Tion, that was a quick one. Yeah. Okay. We may actually change things up a little bit and have Tion play a second game. But before we do that, let's have Fun Master Mike play some old man chess. Tion, are you ready to comment on my game? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of a switch so that all the viewers can see my screen and, and hopefully my moves that aren't. I will play you again, but I know that username and you gave me an excellent game, but I want to see if anybody else out there in the chess kid world would like to challenge Fun Master Mike. Is there anybody else online right now? If so, you need to challenge me to a five-minute game. And if I don't get a challenge soon, maybe on Equal Poonley, you'll get a second game. Just making sure. I do have some friends in the chat, don't I? Yeah, look at all these friends. Oh, they're all playing chess games right now. Usually when I log in, I get tons of challenges. But maybe everybody is sleeping in for the holidays. Okay, well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make a five-minute challenge if nobody wants to play me. Nobody wants to play me. All right, Unequal Puma, I'm going to challenge you. Oh, well, it's a 15-minute game. Wild Lean Magma, if you can hear me, challenge me to a five-minute game, and then I might accept. I'm going to give you five more seconds. Otherwise, I'm going to accept this challenge. Also have black species. And Mike is going to Sicilian. Okay. Sicilian, I think, is most popular opening. 
Yeah, this knight of three with d4 variation. Four, it's not so popular because when you put bishop on c4, then black blacks can play e6 d5 and put your bishop away. Okay, so we have uh, Sicilian defense, yeah, <laughs> and it looks like little bit like dragon variation. Yeah, e6. I don't know about e6. Is it good move because now? I was thinking d6 was strong a little bit because, okay, bishop is three, yeah. I don't like e6 move because now all ducks worth is just weak. Yeah, bishop c5, maybe. I don't know, maybe bishop c5, queen d6. No, just castle. Think here, yeah, shot castle and d5, it's two main moves. And Mike is gonna play d5, okay. And I think Mike is going to win. Oh, I think Mike had, oh, okay. I think Mike had, uh, e takes D and when Bishop on C4 was hanging, then just D4 on the next move and both pieces are hanging and it looks like winning for Mike, but Mike didn't sell it. I think here, castle, it's the best. And now E5, Bishop C5. Wow, F6. I don't, maybe it's not so good move. But it looks okay because, I mean, castle idea. I don't like that now pawn on e6 is weak one, but now you, Mike's idea is to play e5 and d4, maybe. And it's already okay for Mike, I think. So let's wait for, okay, here I think e5, yeah. I just play e5. And after bishop c5, d4, bishop e7, there will be, and that's, I think it's unequal. <laughs> Position. I think white's slightly better because Mike's bishop is uh, Mike's bishop is really not good on g7. But I mean, if you don't play d4, then it will be just rook d8 and, and no, then the pawn will hang and pawn will hang in and you need to do rook d8. But after rook d8, bishop is seven, king is seven. It's <laughs> not so good when you don't have. Castle. Okay. I think here yeah, castle is only good move. Yeah. My played castle. Now this uh, uh, from unequal Puma, Bishop, is not so good because he cannot come back. And yeah, I think Mike is better. Knight d5, this looks quite good. Okay. Oh, but knight d5, wait. Knight d5, bishop f8, yeah. Rook f8 is better. Rook f8, yeah. Rook f8 is better. Interesting question. Rook f8, yeah. Rook f8 is better. Interesting question. Rook f8, yeah. Rook f8 is better. Interesting question. Rook f8, yeah. Rook f8 is better. Interesting question. Rook F and it might want to play king h8, yeah, but this was a quite interesting move because like f5, e4 idea, maybe. Maybe rook a c8, yeah. Maybe I'm right. Just, I'm just going to yeah. jump back in here. Sorry, I just turned my microphone and my earbuds back in. I want to welcome all of the viewers that came from the World Blitz Championship. I know this is what you were really paying good money to see. This is Fun Master Mike and the teacher. We're Fun Master Mike. I'm the voice of chess. Could I team up with my partner in chess, nine-year-old Tihan Chernayev, the next superstar from the Ukraine. He's commenting on my game. Then I'm going to comment on his game. I'm going to make you play one more, Tihan. Then we're going to play some hand and brain. If you want a chance to play us, you need to go into the Chess Kid live server right now. But I've got a game to play. So I'm going to go back to silent, mute my earphone, mute my earbuds, have Tion take over the commentary. So Tion, back to normal operations. OK. F5 will, OK, F5, I might want to put knight from me for a little bit, or to D2, or to G3, or to G5, or to D6. I don't think that D6 where it's is quite good for knight, because I can play queen C8, maybe, or knight D5. Yeah, because you close your bishop attacks rook, so knight d6, knight d5, and it's, I think, better for Mike. And knight d2, then, okay, knight g3, unequal 
pull my plate now to three. Rook c8, yeah. I don't know, is it good? Exchange from bishop e7, queen e7, queen e7 yeah. Okay, but Mike's like it. Yeah, but I was thinking that Mike's bishop is not so good. But after e4, it will be good, great, I think. But unequal Puma's knight will be not so good because I didn't see a good square to put knight on. So I think Mike is better. So yeah. Oh, but that's my blunder of queen d4, no? Queen d4, it takes d, rook e7, rook c2, rook a7, rook b2. I don't know. Queen d4 or rook c2. Okay, rook c1. Yeah, e4 is good. It's a good move because queen d4 already was red. If you don't play e4. Okay. I know queen b4 or something, this idea. Okay, queen b7, I think it looks quite good. And yeah, to attack pawn. And if b3 then maybe, maybe, d3 or e3 maybe. I don't know. Okay, Mike is gonna play h5 to put knight out of from g3 square. I don't know, maybe it's not so good because now knight e2, yeah, better king a pawn. And knight e4 to attack in this pawn on g6. I don't know, does h5 was good or maybe it was, wasn't so good. But okay. So unequal puma is sinking. And I mean, maybe on knight e2 you even have e3 move. I don't know. H3, whoa, it's really not a good move because, I mean, if it was bishop on g3, yeah, I understand the idea because on f4, bishop h2 only good move. But here, knight cannot jump on h2, so I don't understand point of h3 move. Don't really understand point of h3. And my is up on minute and half minute. Oh, no, minute and half. Yeah, so my kids have one extra minute, 30 seconds. Oh, and unequal Puma blunders, bishop h6. Oh, wait, maybe it's sacrifice. Queen d4, maybe it's a idea to bishop c1, rook c1, try to play knight e3, d5. I don't know. f4. Okay, yes, it was funny. If Mike chop and if Mike done and passant, he takes f7, rook e7, and Mike just down a queen. And here, h4 and z, I think, completely winning no better for Mike. And g5, yeah. Put in pp on a pp. And now Mike is completely winning, I think, because I didn't see a really good way here to. Yeah, but g takes f. Look at this four points at the center f5, f4, e4, d4. They are really strong ones, I think. And now rook g8, rook g2. Yeah, Mike is winning. Rook g2. Ooh. I think rook g2 is better. But here, I think you. Yeah, change. Rook g2, bishop c1, rook c2. That's winning. Oh, what? What? Mike don't want to shop on c1. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Yeah, so Mike is completely winning here. I think there's now not so many chances to save position with blacks. Yeah, Rook C1. Okay, congratulations to Mike. He won the game. All right, I'm back. How did I play? I think you played quite well, but I saw some moments. Uh, first moment on move, uh, so it is two. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to go back into our analysis mode, and then Tihan is going to tell me how I could have played better. So Fun Master Mike is getting a lesson from the teacher. Okay, I'm going to go back to my game history. And okay. let's click on that recent game against Unequal Puma, who gave me another great challenge. And you said move 32. Okay. Yep. So back to this position. 
I think but I was, already, I was yeah, yeah. already winning here, right? I think he instead of queen of four, rook g2. I thought rook g2, queen h4, and I thought I would win the position slowly and not let his queen get to no, h4. But why? Uh, rook g2, queen h4, rook c2, g8, and rook g1, mate, or isn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess his queen has no invasions, does she? Yeah, and why you didn't take on c1? Uh, well, I thought my bishop was the only piece protecting my king. But I think at this moment, it's pretty easily winning with that wall of pawns, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if, if my worst mistake was at this point, I can live with that. Because I think, yeah, I'm already winning at this point. But I think you're right. You made a good point. If, let me go to my analysis button here, rook g2, queen h4 was the move I was worried about. But now that I look more closely, the queen has no useful next move. And you wanted me to play rook g1, or rook g8, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now if the knight moves to guard g1, then the knight no longer guards h2, and so that was the point. Yeah, very good idea. Um, he probably has to play knight g3, but then he's getting no, but the knight entire... g3, queen g3, rook, g, uh, rook a2, g3, rook h3, just wait. That's true, yeah. So here, we take with the yeah. queen, and he could give a check, but we don't really care, and we take with this rook, and then this rook's coming over for mate on the next turn. Okay. And I saw also one more moment okay. when well, your moment? opponent, yeah. Which point? When you're uh, on move number nine. Yeah, way back here. Okay. Uh, after castle d5. Castle d5, okay. Uh, e takes d. I think you had here e takes d follow up d4. No. Uh, can you play this move though? Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, I see your point. If he moves the bishop somewhere, I can just push, right? Yeah, but if he plays bishop d4, it's not so easy to win, yeah. Yeah, but it's, actually, he would have to find the move bishop d4, which is a hard move to find. Um, yeah, but I think if he finds it, he already slightly better. He could be, yeah. And so the goal, and I'm sure Tihan knows this, is to keep the center pawn. So Tihan would normally take this way, except I know he was looking for the tactic. But yeah. if the tactic doesn't work, then we should take with the c pawn. But a very good point. If takes, I'm threatening d4, but if white finds the Zichenzug bishop d4, then white is at least okay, maybe even better. Um, yeah. I, I thought a risky decision by me was in the game, I believe this happened. At the moment. Yeah, six, yeah. The moment where he played her, yeah, I thought f6 was a bit of a risk, but I really wanted to get my center pawns going. Okay, yeah. Well, Tian, you only had a very short game when you did your game and I analyzed it. And we have a whole bunch of new viewers, about 800 of them, eager to see wow. you play. So, Tian, we're going to have you play one more game, and I'm going to okay. comment on your game. Then we'll go play the hand and brain, okay? Uh, Wait, so go let, yeah. Your request a five minute game? Uh, oh, I already got challenged. Shall Fantastic. I accept it? Yes, you can. Okay. Playing against Tricky Drizzle. Ooh, I'm against his legs. Pretty high rating. You finally got a good one. <laughs> okay, so the teacher is black. And let's see what he does after E4. Could be our third Sicilian of the day, but he's actually, he loves to play the Alakine. So I'm a little curious here which one he's going to choose. By the way, I don't like Alejandro too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going for another Sicilian. Maybe he's giving some respect to his opponent's higher rating. Okay, we don't see knight of six very often in the Sicilian because e5 can happen, but of course that gives away the d5 square. Now that d5 is no longer available, Tihan did have to stop the move e5, and now we're back in a little bit more main lines. Okay. I don't think I actually know Tihan's opening repertoire, so what's he going to play against the Sicilian? Ah, he's going to go back to a dragon, kind of like I did. Now, his pawn is already on d6, so it's more of a mainline dragon rather than an accelerated dragon, but those are very small differences that we're not going to get into right now. Okay, Bishop e2 stops knight to g4, and instead of going for the very sharp opposite side castle's position, which we often call the Yugoslav variation. This is more of the classical variation where both sides castle on the same side. We don't get to see some Tian fireworks, at least not the kind that we see when the kings are on opposite sides. And I'm almost positive in the chess kid video where we talk about kings castling on opposite sides, 
I think we actually show a dragon position because black already has the half open C file to attack on. Okay. Anyway, back to our game. And often white pushes the pawn to f3 to be safe, to keep the knight out of g4, sometimes also to f4 to be more aggressive. Okay, now Tihan has released the tension in the center by trading knights. That means white doesn't have to worry about knight to g4 quite as much because there's no bishop on e3. And what that tells me is white might be a little bit more inclined to play f2 to f4 to get a bit of a stronger uh, hold of the center. White could also just put a rook on the d file in castle normally. Ah, maybe white's listening to me. That's why they call him the tricky drizzle, because my moves are drizzling out. He's being very tricky and listening. No, so I'm going to advise you taking my advice because Tihan's a stronger player than me, I think. Well, we'll see. Uh, he did beat me when we played a one blitz game when he was one of the top finishers in our Guinness World Record tournament. Okay, so bishop to c4. And now, you know, if trades, now white has to really worry about rook takes d4 ideas. Uh, in fact, there's already a bit of an issue because if you move the bishop backward, then the e pawn hangs. Maybe you chop on a7 and you hope and pray your bishop does not get trapped by b6. Um, there's also variations here. I'm just going to make something up. If bishop a7, Tion can sometimes play rook takes c3. Very, very common idea in the dragon because you get all of white center pawns. You get tempos on the queen. The c pawn will be very weak. Um, I don't think he has to sacrifice to gain an advantage after bishop takes a7. He could just play knight takes e4 and play a little more normally. Um, I, again, though, there could be tactics on the bishop. Uh, queen a5 is a move. Pawn b6 is a move. So if you're white here, um, you I mean, it's a blitz game. You don't have a chance to look at every single possibility after bishop takes a7. Um, you can't play knight e2 because your e-pawn hangs. At least I think it does. Knight e2. Okay. But now all of those tactics on the bishop are still there. Can you execute one right away? If you play rook takes bishop and the queen takes back, yeah, maybe there's no good discovered attack yet with the knight. It's close, but not quite. And I see someone keeps trying to challenge me. It's not your turn to play me. We're, we're watching Tion's game right now. Well, what do you viewers think in the chat? You guys like black's position here or do you like white's position? Very curious to hear what you think. I think I'm going to take black because of all the tactics that I've mentioned. Um, even if they don't work yet, it doesn't mean that black's not going to set them up. I think there could be a way to set one up later. You could also just play b6 or a6 and save your queen side pawns and go for tactics later. Um, by the way, knight takes e4 is a little bit interesting, but white could take back with the rook, and that might mess up all of black's plans. Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so Tion has played queen d7. I think the main idea of this move is to get the other rook to the c file and then uh, maybe do some damage that way. Okay, so bishop takes a7 is still a kind of an idea, especially with your e-pawn a little bit safer than it was before. Okay, so Tian's actually getting a good challenge this time. For some reason, I feel like the kids, I get the tougher games, but I think Tian's gotten the tougher game this time. We're going to see how the nine-year-old superstar from the Ukraine is able to figure this out. He is a former world rapid champion, so he is no stranger to fast time controls. And I'm like a proud dad here, even though I'm not. I'm just his colleague. He finished in fourth place in the worldwide puzzle battle competition. Or was it called puzzle duel? Puzzle battle. Okay, anyway, the point is he was scoring like 45 puzzles correct and almost qualified for the finals. It was amazing because he was playing against grandmasters and international masters. So I don't have all my facts straight, but let me just tell you, he is a beast when it comes to tactics. In fact, I don't even know if he's ever lost a puzzle duel on Chess Kid. Um, I think his record for most consecutive wins is in the hundreds. So beat that, Magnus. Yeah, you got 100 classical wins, but my boy Tihan's got like 400 puzzle duel wins in a row. Okay, so back to our game here. White has gone into a deep Rip Van Winkle sleep. And uh, Tricky Drizzle, I've got some advice. Do not spend a minute per move in Blitz Chess. I know this is a tough position, but just play King H1 and get your king off the, the weak diagonal or something. But you can't spend this much time on, um, on a game in the Blitz. You just can't do it. Um, 
Part of me wanted to see if you could play C3 using a technique where you basically clear out the entire dark square diagonal. But if you play C3, that's incredibly risky because, of course, you weaken the dark squares, especially your knight, before you're able to clear off that diagonal. I'm not quite sure that would have worked. Okay, so back to our game. A knight trade has been offered, but uh, the in-between move is required. Okay. Actually, this is an interesting idea by White. White just got rid of a lot of the pressure. I assume pawn takes will happen to keep the c2 pawn safe. And if Tihan really wants this pawn, I doubt he's really going to take it because then queen g5 check recovers the pawn. And even if Tihan wins the c2 pawn, he's exposing his king a lot. I'm not sure he's willing to do that. Now, white's got an interesting idea on the next turn. White could play f6 check as a sacrifice, messing up black's pawns. Um... I don't know that white's getting full value for the pawn because black can always play f6 to f5 and keep all of his pawns guarded. Um, but again, it's just an idea that black needs to at least be thinking about on the next turn. Okay, so big decision here. The e7 pawn is a little bit backward, but so is the c2 pawn. So both sides have pawns on half-open files that are going to be targeted. It's just a question of who can organize better attacks. Now, black can double rooks on the c file, but white can always play c3. Okay, so f6. Now, this really weakens the e7 pawn. However, black can always guard it by playing rook f7 if he has to. So it might be that Tihan was really worried about white playing f6, and that's why he chose this method. Um, we'll have to ask him later on. I think this is the big question I'm going to ask him. Why did he play f6? Remember, in my game, I think he was probably wondering why I played f6. So, uh, And in my chess kid videos, we always say, don't push your f pawn without my written permission. Let's see. Tion, let me get my pencil and paper out. I can actually give you my written permission on my post-it note. But no, let's see. If he wins the game, then we'll say he had my written permission. Um, but he did weaken the e6 square. Uh, White could actually just sink a rook on e6 and then form Alakine's gun. However, Black can guard e7 with his king, but Black has to worry about a queen h6 invasion. So I think I like White a little bit better in this position. Oh, and a very good comment in the chat. By AA175, I want to sing your praises. Instead of F6 right away, White was actually threatening Rook takes E7 check, Queen takes, then F6 check. Now, technically, White is actually giving away two Rooks for a Queen, uh, because after Queen takes F6, that would have happened. That's going to be maybe the position that we analyze after this is over. And guess what? We have a video on Chess Kid that discusses this exact trade. Two Rooks versus the queen. I think we even discussed it on last week's stream. We said it's one of the hardest imbalances in chess to give an exact rule for because it's pretty close to 50-50 when the rooks are better and when the queens are better. Let's go back to our action here because we've only got 13 seconds remaining for white. So Tian is under a little bit of pressure. He's never going to regain control of e6, but he's got 50 extra seconds, and now he's found himself a weakness. The d5 pawn might be going down. Okay, if it does, though, then the e7 pawn is weak. So I think his idea might be queen e1, rook e5, or maybe rook e5 anyway, unless there's a back rank mate that I'm not seeing. But rook e5, and then you've got what we call the reverse Oreo. You have the white rooks on the outside and the black rook in the middle. So we got cream on the outside cookie in the middle. Well, you know, there's orange Oreos at Halloween, so why not have a reverse Oreo, right? Okay, so D takes, and now has white trapped his own rook? Wait, what was wrong? Okay, so I check first, but what was wrong with queen D7 trapping the rook? Was there a way to save the rook for white on the last turn? Oh, I guess there was, there was queen, no. See, C4 actually cuts off the queen's uh, white queen's ability to guard the rook. Okay, so now it's trapped. Okay, so he eventually trapped the rook. I was, I think he could have just played queen d7 right away, but he got the job done. And, you know, chess is a very results-oriented game. He's going to get the result that he wants. So, close one here by Tihan, but he took care of business. Okay, I'm back here. Let's get him back on the line. Tihan, you got a real good challenge that game. Yeah. Was it there any point where you were worried? Yes. Uh, do you want to go into the analysis mode? Because there's one big question I have of you. Yeah, okay. So there's one point where I was worried, and that's where you played F6. Can you tell the viewers why you played F6? Me. So yeah. uh, click on the magnifying glass there. 
um, right above your username, there's that. Yeah. And now you'll be able to make moves on the board that mm -hmm. were not played in the game. Okay. So, so you take over now. Why'd you play F6? Because I mean, okay, F6 was written in the first and I was don't like that. Maybe also don't like, like maybe queen D3, then F6 and queen D4. So my pawn is really weak there. And yeah, of course, what's rookie seven? I mean, if I do something like that, just rookie seven and white winning. But wait, maybe not win. Well, that, yeah, actually, I discussed this on the show. You're getting two rooks and, for the queen. And if you already have your rooks connected, it's not like you're clearly worse. I think you're actually okay here. Yeah, I mean, it's okay, but on points it's equal. And I don't like little bit that she gained some more space with okay, this. But but yeah. if I if I may challenge you a little bit here, so after c3, what if you move both rooks to the e file? So play rook e4. Okay. I don't know. Maybe something like that. Yeah, and then you're going to play rook e8 on the next turn. I don't think you're worse. Oh, okay. Queen there? Really? Oh, well, maybe. But even if the queen takes on h7... I mean, I, 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 all the moves I can do here, I mean. Yeah. Oh, you know what? He's actually got to be careful you don't put the rook on the first rank over to h5 and trap the queen in some variations. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, but okay, you're not worse in this position. No, but um, I mean, it's like if uh, I don't, I stop checking him, yeah, like something like that, like rook e2 here. Then there's queen h4, check, then he take one more pawn, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe I don't worse, but it's not so equal like it was in game. Yeah, and yeah. I was a, a second moment, yeah, just queen d7 here. There's no, no really normal moves. Yeah, I, I noticed queen d7. Oh, you yeah, eventually but I think found it. That also was okay, yeah, that queen d7 here. Because, like, if he tried to save his rooks with something like that, I think he had a really great move, b5. Ah, very interesting. Okay. Like, I mean, queen b3, b takes c. But wait, no, no, no. His rook is escaping, which is not so good. No, but that's interesting, but maybe not so good, I mean. Is there well, some... Was, yeah. I was just going to say, it's, you could have trapped the rook. You're still winning in all variations anyway with those extra pawns, so... But I mean, um, something like... I can do something like that, yeah? He did h3, then I check that. I mean, okay, I'm up to pawns, he's down a rook. I can do something like g5 or maybe e4, and I think I'm okay here. I mean, rook d6, it's, I can just jump. And I mean, I can push, and he cannot stop it, I think. Cool. Well, you know, you could always analyze this more on your own stream when you're, uh, you know, you've got some, some uh, we call it fodder. It means you have like, uh, you have like, something you can use now to analyze on your own stream even further because if we were to analyze this entire position we could be here for the whole show but we want to move on that was great analysis yeah we and i think yeah yeah ever. i think here was queen a1 mate I, I blind instead of queen d7 don't feel bad even i didn't notice that i was only focusing on trapping the rook <laughs> <laughs> yeah the thing here okay okay well we're going to play some hand and brain now and uh Tihan, why don't I be the first hand and you be the first brain? Okay, so I'm gonna okay. take I'm gonna take back control of the screen. Okay. Share the right screen with you. I didn't see the screen yet. Okay, sorry, just getting things set up on my end. Okay, so Tion has to name one of the pieces and then I have to actually make the move. Now Nidav has been challenging me all day, even when I was trying to provide commentary. So Nidav, it is your lucky moment. I know we've played before, but I know you've been challenging me a million times. So you win, this is your one game today, okay? So we're gonna make a gentleman or gentlewoman's agreement. This is your one game you get to play against me. Okay, so I'm gonna go quiet uh, actually, no, I'm going to analyze, uh, yeah. but Tian, you're going to name the piece. So I'm the one okay. that gets to analyze, but Tian names the piece. Okay, so here we go against Nidav, and I'm black in this game. And thank you so much to the more than, what do we have, 600 viewers or so? Let me look carefully on the different channels we've got here. 
we've got, yeah, more than 600 viewers at least. Okay, so Tian, name a piece for me. Pon. Okay, I'm going to go back to the Sicilian. It seems to be the theme of the day today. We've had four Sicilians. Oh, but we have all bl games. She's like, wow. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Four. Okay, I would say knight. Okay, now I'm not going to repeat what you did. I'm not going to play knight f6, although it's a reasonable move. Okay. Hmm. Maybe knight, I don't know yet. <laughs> I would say pawn. Okay. Yeah, because knight is not so good. Okay, uh, knight. Yeah, I didn't actually know a good knight move there, so I'm glad you said pawn. <laughs> Uh, pawn. Okay, I'm gonna go back to what got me here. <laughs> Again, dragon. <laughs> okay, bishop. Okay. All right, so now we have an accelerated dragon, and sometimes that matters, viewers, because in certain variations, the d7 pawn comes to d5 in one turn. Pawn. In fact, I think this might be one of those positions where I can just play it. Let's try. Yeah, I think it's okay here. Right. So I the, didn't see really fast tactic here. So <laughs> yeah, and in fact, I would almost call this like a positional trick. So for those of you out there that play white against the dragon, you don't really want to allow d5. Maybe bishop c4 was a better idea there. Yeah. Okay, knight. Yeah, maybe bishop c4, then f3, queen d2, castle, or something like that. I don't know. Okay, if knight d5, prime of queen. If knight c6, prime of pawn. <laughs> okay. We're, uh, we're going to see which one he ends up doing. But yeah, um, black is very happy to get rid. In fact, in pretty much all pawn structures, you said pawn, right? Pawn? Yeah, baby. In pretty much all pawn structures, kids, when the pawn comes to F3 and you can get rid of the E4 pawn, this is just not that good of a pawn structure for white. Okay, I don't know. I would say queen. Okay. I would be happy with either one. I would have taken with the pawn, but, you know, taking with the queen is like a personal preference. Okay, pawn. Okay. Yeah, because one. I don't know if we chop we spawn. Yeah, okay, bishop. Okay. If we took we spawn, then he has something like bishop d4, e5, I don't know, king. Yeah, king. Okay, but you know, you can't analyze because you'll be helping me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, this endgame should be better for black because of the control of the center. And the king is a fighting piece in the endgame. My king is already out fighting. A rook. Okay, now, if I move the A rook to B8, I actually would be okay with the pawn trade. So I'm going to play rook here. I don't want to move the other rook to the B file and bury my A8 rook. Um, so I, that's why I chose Ooh. this rook. I forgot that he can, he can castle. Oops. Okay, pawn. Okay. So he wants me to push. And the reason he's not afraid of C4 is because I can pin that pawn. Oh, rook. Okay, so in this position, it's okay. I actually get my pawn back, and I open a file against his king. So I don't think either of us saw castle's queen side. However, it doesn't terribly matter because I am getting the pawn back. Okay, rook. Okay, now the one thing we have to analyze here is if I take, he could maybe trap my rook with bishop a3. And then I've got to figure out whether or not I'm willing to do something like rook takes a3, pawn takes, bishop takes. I actually... Don't know if I like that position, but my alternative is just to be down material. I'm actually going to do this way. Let me tell you why, viewers. Now, if he plays, now if he plays bishop a3, I can just play bishop takes c3 if I have to. Okay, bishop. Yeah. So this was a much better way of playing because even if he played bishop b4 and then I take on a2, then when his bishop comes to a3, I essentially got my move rook c8 for free, um, which I think would have been good for me. Okay, I would say here. Hmm. Um, interesting. I would say rook. Okay, rook. So um, he probably wants me to pin the b pawn because sacrificing on a3 doesn't get me anywhere. So I think he wants me to use this rook. And the reason is now I'm threatening rook takes a3, but if his bishop moves, I chop on b2. So yeah, this is kind of what you're looking for in the dragon. You're looking for open lines against the queenside castled king. So even though the queens aren't on the board, we're kind of getting our wish. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> interesting. I would say bishop, of course. <laughs> yeah, now bishop takes b2, bishop takes b2, rook takes a2, and his rook can slide over to b1. So sadly, I have to go backward. There is no <laughs> tactic in this position. Yep. No tactic, no... Oh, well. Okay. Mm, 
I would say, yeah, Rook. Okay, let's check the king. Now, I'm a little behind on time, and our standing rule when we play hand and brain is that if I get down to 20 seconds, I'm allowed to do a peace takeover because it just takes too long for Tihan to give me the move and for me to make my mind up. It's a one-second increment, and uh, I know Tihan can speak quickly, but I can't play that quickly. So <laughs> we'll see if we get down. Hopefully, I don't get down anywhere close to 20 seconds, but we'll see. Yeah. Hey, Rook. Okay, uh, I guess I'm going to put pressure on the B2 pawn. I was thinking like rook C4. To yeah. yeah, I think uh, coordinating my rooks is my key objective here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know, wait, rook or bishop? I would say bishop. Okay. So uh, I go for a cheap checkmate. If the rooks trade, I have made on C1. Maybe I'll get lucky today. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. maybe. I hope so. Okay, let's see. Oh, it'd be nice to get lucky once in a while. Yep. Or maybe he's well sleep now. Okay, rook, of course. Okay. Got a mate threat. Even if I don't win. You know, that's, that's what sometimes kids say to me. Like, you know, I, I, I beat them, but they're like, well, at least I checked you. And I'm like, well, yeah, check's part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Let's say you're bishop. Okay, bishop. I'm just going to go. Well, uh, does he want me to attack the pawn? I don't think that does anything. Okay, I'm just no. going to put my bishop back. <laughs> I was there. thinking try to attack pawn and then. Okay, yeah. bishop. Okay, I'm going to avoid the trade because if we get to a rook ending and he has the outside pawn, it's probably equal but i feel like white has better chances i don't know bishop bishop again okay i'm gonna go here what again the bishop f4 <laughs> yeah but he just plays h3 and puts his pawns on light squares ah okay yep i don't know do we need this exchange i don't think really let's do bishop okay i'm gonna come back here now it's really important i did not trade twice it's probably still a draw, but again, the outside pass pawn has me very worried. That's a good lesson, chess kids. When you're in, well, we're not really in the middle game, but we're, when you're thinking of transitioning to a simpler end game, especially a king and pawn end game, you need to make sure before you enter the king and pawn end game that you're better off. Okay. Maybe it's a pawn. Yeah, pawn. Okay, I do want to get my pawns going. The question is, if I play d4, will my pawns get stuck on the wrong color? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go for it, though. Uh, I realize I'm letting him set up a blockade a little bit on the light squares, but I'm going to try to avoid that blockade. Rook. <clears throat> okay, and now I'm going to go this way. I do not want to trade rooks, because then his king will get to d3, and the blockade will be in place for the moment. Yeah, but I mean, you can put king on d5 and e5, f5. Yeah, that would be my plan. But it's not so unequal. <laughs> no, maybe it's a not easy to calculate ever since there. I agree. Okay. Uh, hmm. It's a pawn, yeah. Yeah, because here come the pawns. So I also, if I keep the rooks on the board, when my pawns get to e4 and d4, there will be more targets. Pawn. Okay, so let's get those puppies going. Okay, I uh, would say king. King, okay, I guess bishop a5 doesn't do anything, so I'll go here. I mean, bishop a5, rook a4, you're losing. <laughs> yeah, it does something, it just doesn't do anything good. <laughs> oh, let's say rook here. Okay, now I will double his pawns. Uh, pawn. Pawn, okay. Yeah, because now you're like... Well, I would have said king, I would have gotten my king to c4, but I'm still, I think I'm winning anyway. Okay, pawn. Okay, we've gotten okay, to the magical 20 seconds. Yeah, we've gotten to 20 seconds, so I get to take over. Okay, he got his king there, but I'm going to put my pawns on the light squares so that I can get them to the dark squares. Very important rule. I guess I could have played e3 there because it was with tempo, so actually it would have been okay in that position. And I have this check. That's what I calculated. Because of the check, I'm still going to get my pawn to e3 on the next turn. Okay, let's pre-move in case he decides to take. He did, and I'm going to guard that pawn. Okay, so things are looking pretty good here. I'm going to blockade this pawn. Actually, I blockaded it poorly. Maybe I should just go here. Can I give a check? Let's see, let's see which way he goes. 
Yeah, he went there. Okay, I better go back while I have the chance. <laughs> I did I did mess that up a little bit. Okay, let's play king there. But luckily, I have a million tempos. So anytime I need his king to move, I can just toggle my bishop. It's no big deal. I am down to 14 seconds, so I'll need to keep a little bit of an eye on that. But eventually, his king is going to have to move. Come on. Come on, Mr. King. I'll go back. And here's what I mean. When his king moves over sideways, I'll check. And then I have these million bishop moves, which means his king is eventually going to have to go to c2. Now, he can make a couple of pawn moves, but unlike the bishop, the pawn does run out of moves. The bishop, he's like the energizer bunny. He never runs out of energy. And Tihan's probably saying, who is the energizer bunny? And that's where I say, Tihan, you should have grown up in the 90s, not in the 2010s. So I'm going to have you Google energizer bunny when you get done. <laughs> Actually, do you know what I'm talking about? Nope. Oh, there's a, a the famous battery company, Energizer. And yeah. to show how their batteries would never lose power, they had this bunny that would like beat on a drum and go across the screen during commercials. And he would never lose energy. And it was meant to show that their battery would just go forever and ever. And it, actually, their tagline was, and we're going and we're going and we're going and going. Anyway. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but trust me, there's this thing called YouTube, and, and you can see that Fun Master Mike is not crazy. You can go on YouTube and look at the Energizer Bunny. Okay, Nidav, let me wish you a good game here in the chat, because that was excellent. We only won by the very small margin of, yeah, basically when you traded rooks, I think that was your downfall, because then yeah. your pawns got blockaded, right, Tion? Yeah, maybe you need to king a4, king c2, d1, and maybe sacrifice bishop for two pawns, and then there is a lot of <laughs> game. A lot yeah, of was, exactly. That would have kept white in the game. Okay, it's time for me to stop my screen, and now I'm going to be the brain, and Tihan, you're going to be the hand, and hopefully I'll give you some good pieces to move. I'll do my okay. best. Okay, so let me go back and go ahead and try to play a five-minute game. Yeah, I create a challenge with him. Okay. And I had a million kids. Oh my God, is I had about 1,000 challenges there. I'm trying to get rid of on my screen. Okay, so nobody challenged me right now because I'm not going to accept. It's my turn to help Mr. Tihan. Okay, so we finally, no, we got black again. <laughs> no. It was, five it was in a row. Black. Who are my math geniuses out there? What are the odds of getting five in a row? Come on, you know you know how to do this. Give me the odds of five in a row. Okay, are we going to see, oh, sorry. I have some work to do. Pawn. I no. realize I just spotted our opponent's 25 seconds. Pawn. This is, the, this is the Sicilian hour, I can see. Uh, let's do knight. No, let's, let's yeah, I think knight d7 was the worst move on the board because if bishop takes f7. Okay, let's do pawn. Yeah, yeah, knight d7, bishop of 7, knight g5, knight d6. <laughs> Stop, but I have uh, my queen can escape from 2a5 square. You're right. So maybe it doesn't quite work. It's just an idea. But often, yeah. just an idea. Okay, let's see. Are there any tricks here? Let's do knight. I was thinking about knight e4, but I don't. I won't. I don't want to really kill it. Oh, yeah, what there was a see? check. Whoa! Somebody really <laughs> wants to checkmate us on f7. Uh, but I'm gonna do pawn. Okay, so it's already like second game for me <laughs> when they are sacrificing a piece. Knight. Yeah, I know. Sometimes when like your castle and true on you want, sometimes knight e5 is a good idea, but not now. Uh, let's do bishop. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. <laughs> now we become boring chess players and we make trades. All no, right, but I'm I mean, if we didn't make uh, trades, then king e7 wouldn't be so good, I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. They, I would not, I'm not saying we had much of a choice in that position. Let's do queen. Why not king? <laughs> Well, you really want to be <laughs> inventive, don't you? Okay, so I don't like the knight hanging out in my territory. Let's do pawn. Oh, I shouldn't have said anything. I should have said pawn. No, but I mean, there was queen g4 move. I was liking it, so or exchange queen, so I take your knight and... <laughs> it's not so good for you, I mean. For white, because queen's exchange and... It's really not so good. All right, well, is this Rich Classic Cheese? His name got cut off. Oh, Cheetah. Rich Classic Cheetah. That's better than cheese. Okay, let's do Bishop. <laughs> Only move. I mean, yeah. 
No, you didn't play the move I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. I had done so many choices, so sorry, please. <laughs> Well, let's see. If I say king on the next turn, you're going to have a legitimate choice. Oh, but I'm not going to say king. Let's do pawn. Oh, I see some great tactic. But you will find it too. <laughs> well, let's see if he plays queen takes d4. Yeah, okay. I think he already sees that something will be <laughs> wrong on queen d4. Could be. And I see your tactic. So let's see. If he plays queen takes d4. Oh, we were going to play knight f3. We don't get a chance to play it. Okay. No, I was thinking queen h3 instead of knight h3. But okay. <laughs> yeah, that's probably even better. Okay. Castle. Uh, 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 I said it wrong. <laughs> king. King. I meant to say king. It's Kang. <laughs> Kang. <laughs> I can't speak English today. All right. Uh, Poland. Double knight sack. Wow. We were actually just looking at a double knight sack game before we went on the air, but this is not the same as the game we were looking at. Yeah. <laughs> okay, pawn. Right, that's really good. Yeah, queen. <clears throat> okay, I want to see. This pawn was here from e4 to e6, so I don't want to trap it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we talked about the reverse Oreo. This is like the cream-filled donut, right? You got yeah. pieces on all four sides of the cream <laughs> filling. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Now Tihan always gets upset if I don't find the right tactic. And let's take a look, viewers. The bishop on f4 is a loose piece, so I'm going to say knight and see what Tihan does. I don't know. I can trade to simplify position, but I want to go in here. Okay, I knew you were going to move the knight somewhere. I wasn't sure where. Yeah, I mean, knight of three was also maybe good. If g takes f, we weakness your king yeah. position. And if queen of three, it's just end game. And pawn. And the reason I think Tihan chose the knight where he did is because if his knight gets to f4, then it teams up very well with the queen. Let's do knight. In fact, I think it was Kasparov who said, like something like when you get your knight to f5, it's worth a pawn or... You know, like knight f5 is always an attacking move. He was talking about the white side. Yeah. I mean, I think in Ryan Lopez, it's really popular. Yeah. When you put knight on f5, I think you're better with white. Exactly. Okay. So let's see. Um, let me make sure there's no tactics. I don't think there are. Let's do bishop. Hmm. Oreo is raked. <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to eat the cream filling. <laughs> No, I don't want to eat. That's hero pawn, so I don't want to chop it. <laughs> are, you one of the, are you one of those Oreo eaters where you twist the Oreo and you eat half of it? Yeah. You are one of those people. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so the rook went there, and still I don't see any tricks. Let's do a rook. Okay. Okay, we're closing in. Our time is looking decent. Rich yep. Classic Cheetah, you're hanging in there. I know your rating is a little below ours, but you're hanging in there. Let's do Knight. Don't chop here, Pawn. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you're going to play Knight H3, Knight G5. But yeah, but I mean, I want to put Knight on E3. I think it's also pretty okay. Oh, Yeah, you have great options. Let's do Knight again. See, of course, Tihan knows that he's going to get a fork. He's a, a, a what we call a fortune teller. He knew that was going to be a fork. Can I pre-move Knight? I guess I can't if he plays rook takes g7. That would be illegal. Yeah. Um, I can almost pre-move knight. I'm trying to figure out what could he play where I would not want to move the knight. I mean, uh, queen d4. <laughs> queen d4, yeah, that's about the only move. Mm, not right. only rook g6, rook e4, rook h4, rook c1, rook b1. Oh, but this knight also knight move, okay. <laughs> yeah, you would still move the knight, yeah. There's only one move that loses the queen, but is not captured by the knight, and you found it. Queen takes d4. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so, outside of queen takes d4, we will pre-move knight. And rook g7 also, right? <laughs> oh my goodness! He played it! That's unbelievable! I, rich classic cheetah, you're, you're listening to the broadcast, aren't you? <laughs> he, could, he could still move the knight and take on the rook and be okay, but okay, I did say pre-move knight except for queen takes d4, so let's do pawn. We're not, we're not required to take because I, I gave that provision. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so gonna... he was thinking that uh, if uh, he played queen d2 and knight g4, okay. Uh, bishop? No, please. Okay. I don't want to. Okay. Oh, you want to... Okay, you want okay. to play queen takes f3 or something? No, I want to keep this hero bond with rook f8. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> you want to let the Oreo make it to, I don't know, what's a promotion for an Oreo? Like a bigger cookie. Um, what's the name of a bigger cookie? Oh my goodness, somebody's going to have to clip this. I don't know a name of a cookie bigger than Oreo. You're probably thinking, is this show sponsored by Nabisco? And I'm <laughs> thinking, does Nabisco make Oreos? Okay, a lot of things that need to be answered here. Let's do Rook. <laughs> so either, either I just got us a very, very lucrative sponsor for the show, Tihan, or... Yeah. Or Nabisco will never give us money again, but they're already <laughs> not giving us money, so who cares? Okay, let's do. Um, okay, I know you don't want to play knight takes rook, so let's do queen. There and we go. Rook e three, pre some pre moves or no? I can pre move queen. I mean, okay, on rook g seven. <laughs> okay, but remember, in a normal pre move, if you pre move and the move becomes illegal, you can do whatever you want. Yep. So I guess this, we have to count that as the same on hand and brain. So I'll yeah, but I mean, queen. I don't want to play move because every move like h4, if I play move king of one, he can chop. If I play move queen g2, rook e3, he can play and then chop. How do you think? Will he play rook e3? <laughs> uh, oh, I guess I'm not saying pre-move. Yeah, you're right. I'm saying I'm pre-speaking queen. You still have the right to move her wherever you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I again said he will take on his red, he chop. Okay. Okay, I'll do and queen. Queen. Okay. And there we go. We finished them off. Okay, that was a fun one. Uh, yeah. But don't give us your pieces to start at the game. And a lesson that we keep seeing, so for all the kids that are watching this either live or on the rebroadcast on Chess Kid, when you play against the Sicilian, you almost never put your bishop on c4. Because if black plays e7 to e6, your bishop is what we call biting on rock. Your bishop is not going to ever be able to capture on e6. And in fact, you're often going to be subject to the move d5. Now, I know there's this special exception called the Grand Prix attack. There are special exceptions to everything, but we're not going to talk about that today. Yeah, I think, I mean, in Dragon also sometimes, yeah, when d4, yeah. There are some exceptions, exactly right, but you can't do it too early on, I'll put it that way. Yeah, on move uh, second or third, it's not so good. After d4, it can be good, but not now. You're exactly right. And and actually, Tion has just kind of mentioned uh, something that's true about all of chess, is that in your first couple of years of learning, we try to give you some very baseline rules to remember. But then for the rest of your life, you learn all of the exceptions. In fact, today, you've seen both Tihan and me push our F-pawn, which I tell you never to do, basically, in our chess kid videos. <laughs> but, but we know there are some exceptions where you have to break the rules. Yeah. So, no, but um, here we didn't push it. We just shot the knight. I mean, <laughs> that's true. We had a good. No, but that was really funny, Oreo. Yeah, when like uh, from each side, yeah, from this one and from this one, you can eat it and eat it. Yeah, in fact, I wish this was like one of our regular chess kid videos that was animated because I would have my animator build a giant Oreo that would go across the entire screen. Um, but we'll save that for another day. And a shout out to our awesome animator. His name is Nassar, uh, and he is fantastic. So Nassar, you're probably not listening, but thank you for all the beautiful animations. You are really what makes kids love our videos. Okay, we're gonna switch. So Mr. Teacher, if you will please give me control of the screen, and then you're gonna be the brain, and I'm gonna be the hand, and we're gonna try to make sense of everything. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully I got that right. Yep. Okay. And now, yeah, it looks good. Okay, just making sure I shared the right screen and you guys are not answering my email. You want to answer my email? You want to switch jobs for the day? Um, maybe some other time. Okay, Tricky Drizzle, I've already played you, but I have not played Kevin 2019, or I should say Kev 2019. So here we go. Kev, you got a good rating. And now, Tihan, I've closed out all my other challenges and we finally got white. Miracles Yay! happened. <laughs> After all the stream, yay! It's like that movie right. Miracle on 34th Street, except it's Miracle on 64 Squares. We got white. Okay. I would say night. Okay, I was going to say, you've only got two <laughs> options. <laughs> only two options there. Okay, so night F3. I would say night. And because I talk so much, I've again spotted our opponent about 20 seconds. 
But thank you for sticking around, Mr. Kev. I would say not night, but I will say pawn. Okay. And I'm going to, you know, sometimes I don't know who my viewers are. Kev, I'm going to assume your name is Kevin. So I hope it's not Kevina and you're a girl. So I'm going to call you he for this one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bishop. Okay, so I think he probably wants me to pin the knight. And now we're in some kind of really weird, like, French where my bishop, well, my knight's oh, already on C3. Of course, pawn. Of course okay, one. so, yeah, black has disconnected the queen from this pawn. Knight. So we're chopping, and, yeah, we're chopping. Yep. For those of you that know Dana Carvey, he likes to chop broccoli. We like to chop pawns. And that joke was pretty clearly over the heads of most kids. But uh, there's a there's a funny skit, I'll tell you that, where this comedian named Dana Carvey pretends uh, he's chopping broccoli. So again, I'm going to point the kids to YouTube. That probably wasn't even a very good move because I'm talking about old Saturday Night Live skits. But whatever. Kids, you just have to trust me. Fun Master Mike was alive when you weren't. That's all you need to know. Queen. <laughs> okay, let's give a check. And the no, reason I want another move with Queen. Are you <laughs> okay? <laughs> let's see, Queen to I don't even know where. <laughs> let's put the Queen back before I mess up. Knight. Okay. I yeah, think the... ninety-seven was better. Yeah. Uh, probably. I uh, probably yeah. Okay, yeah, King. Okay, so let's get our King castled, and now we're going to play rookie one if we get the chance. So Black may want to castle before we do that. That way his knight will not be pressured, and he'll be able to move the knight out of danger if he needs to. So castle early and often. That's the joke. We know you can't castle more than once in a chess game. Rook. Okay, so we are going to do this big, bad, mean pin. Now, Black can get out of it by playing bishop takes knight, and I probably will take with the queen, I think think but then black has to take time okay let's see okay queen of course queen yeah so i mean okay maybe we can, yeah we spawn also interesting but i want queen <laughs> yeah so just to tell the viewers here if i do take with the pawn the standard way to get out of this pin when you can't castle because you'll lose the knight is actually to play f6 and king here well i would say standard out it's one of the ways we'll put it that way now i know that there might be a check later on that black has to think about but yet again we see an example where you may have to move your f pawn however opening up my own king is such a large decision that neither tihan nor me frankly are willing to do that so um, i think queen takes is just much safer option Okay, I would say pawn. I mean, okay, when I play in my own games, not hand and brain, I'm pawn grabber, but here uh, it's a little bit danger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and if you're playing a classical game with slower time controls, you would actually have the time to analyze whether or not Black's King has a way out. But in this game, much better to take with the Queen. Okay, Bishop. Okay, now but I we actually... are down a minute. Yeah, we're down a little bit of time. You're right. But uh, luckily, there's no danger in our position. There's almost nothing that White really has to spend time thinking about. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could have taken. Oh, okay, well. Queen, Queen. We we could have taken on the last turn, but again, we're actually pretty happy making these trades. Uh, Bishop. Okay. Yeah, Black probably should have taken with the knight there, but anyway, he was going to lose a pawn no matter what. No, but I mean, if he takes with the knight, yeah, then knight d4, some alternatives or something, yeah, knight d4, c2, or knight d2. Yeah, he actually has some ideas. I'd probably have to trade rooks and play c3, but clearly Black is getting some play in that position, whereas here Black loses a pawn and gets no play at all. So that's yeah. why Tion was suggesting if the knight had captured, he might still lose the c pawn, but then the knight gets to an awesome square. Look at the knight right now. Not so awesome. Okay, I would say bishop. Okay, so he wants me to go here, I believe. If rook e1, pray move rook. Okay, so I'll I mean, okay, so it's only a legal move, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bishop. Yeah, unfortunately, black had played a pretty decent game up until that move. Rook? Yeah, and it cost black a lot of material. And pray move rook. Okay, unless he, yeah, if he play, that's true. If he plays rookie eight, I can still play rook takes rook, okay? But I think Tian wants me to play this one. Yep. Prime rook, rook. Okay, and prime we love rook. the trade when we're ahead, so we're going to do that. Prime of rook, prime of rook, prime of rook, okay. prime of rook. Okay. Again, prime of rook. Okay. Let's see, he might play c5. Okay, we will do that. Uh, prime of rook. Uh, we get to eat everybody. Our rook is Pac-Man today. <laughs> rook. 
Okay. I thought you were going to say pawn, and then I legitimately did not know which pawn you wanted me to move. <laughs> you want me to move the rook. Okay. Mm, well, not Z square, but okay. A rook? I don't know which way you want me to move the rook. <laughs> <laughs> pawn? Okay. I'm going to guess A pawn. We'll see if that's the one you had in mind. A rook? Okay. Let's go here. Prime of pawn, prime of pawn. Okay. Got that one. Uh, Pray move pawn, pray move pawn, pray. Ah, pr <laughs> pawn. <laughs> I can only move pawns the rest of the game. Is that what you're saying? No, but you can push us the pawn. I thought you wanted me to push the pawns. <laughs> okay, okay. What? I'm, I'm pre moving pawn until you tell me otherwise. <laughs> 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 you haven't said anything, so I, you know, this is the rules of the game. <laughs> oh, oh, I moved rook. I didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he also tried to do what we're doing. <laughs> he is, yeah. He's trying to get all of his pawns to the last rank. <laughs> okay, so now knight, yeah? One more rook and queen, yeah? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we could get our whole army back. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll set our chessboard back up on the last rank. <laughs> A pawn? <laughs> Wait, I was going to do rook check. Okay, so you want me to do there and I'll get another piece? Okay, so knight and queen, okay? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Let's see, I just want to make sure I don't stalemate myself here. Or stalemate him, rather. Yeah, but he has pawns, so I mean, stalemate is tough to do it, but yeah. Okay. I got Promote my army back. <laughs> Promote just two more pawns or no? <laughs> no, I think it's too much. Let's go ahead and go for the mate. Okay, queen. Okay, so we're going to be boring chess players now. We had our fun. Queen. It's like when you're outside playing, having fun, and then your mom calls you in for dinner, and the fun just stops, like, right away. <laughs> and you're like, oh, mom! <laughs> bishop. Okay, and we finished him off. We at least got a bishop mate. Hey, got one rating point, too. I'm catching up to you. All I have to do is win 200 more games. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to play one final hand and brain game. I've completely lost track of time, but we'll make it equal. Tion's going to play the hand one more time. I'm going to be the brain. Let me stop my screen. Tihan, you've okay. got full control. And you're going to get a five-minute game, and then I'm going to ride your coattails. And you know I have great means. news. Uh, Aqua Health will device challenge me, so I will play him. Nice. Oh, finally, right. I play finally with YTA. That, that, okay. is, that is my holiday present to you. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, I rigged it so you got at least one white today. Okay, let's do pawn. Could be your final chess game of the year, Tihan, or do you plan on playing some online after this? Again, please. Do you plan on playing any more chess after this, or is this your last game of 2019? I think tomorrow I will also play some games. Okay, sounds good. Now, in the spirit of today, he's moving his F-pawn. And again, kids, do not try this at home. Okay, <laughs> let's do knight. <laughs> By the way, I think forgot this a little bit. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, knight f3 is really super safe. That way we don't get checkmate on an h4 ever. Okay, let's do pawn. We're, we're calming things down here. This has a real name. It's called bird's opening. Um, and let's do pawn. And then okay, now, let's go some kind of Dutch with white, yeah? Yeah, exactly. This is called the Dutch stone wall. And I used to love playing this as a kid. Let's do bishop. Yeah, I never played it before, but I'm, it looks okay. I had this computer growing up, one of the computers where it's only, uh, let's do pawn. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a computer where like you had to move the pieces on a board and play, and the computer would lose the exact same way against the Dutch stone wall every single time. So I would just play it and play it because the computer did not understand how to play better chess. Uh, let's do king. Now, there's some common ideas in the stone wall, which I think, Tihan's about to show us here. The only bad news for white is his bishop on c1. Sometimes it comes all the way around via d2 and e1, but sometimes you don't even need to. Um, let's do queen. I'm going to show you a typical Dutch stonewall idea. Exactly. The queen sneaks out to the queen to the king side, and I would play this against, I think it was called an Excalibur computer. I'd play this against the computer all the time, and I'd always checkmate him. Okay, uh, now he's stopping queen h4. Very good news by black. And let's do knight. I mean, okay, maybe there was some Greek gift, but 
That's so easy to calculate, yeah? Exactly, especially when he's guarding the G5 square. Um, but if you don't know what we mean by Greek gift, go to chess.com forward slash videos and do a search for the word Greek. You'll be able to find the video. Very simple. Let's do knight. You know what? I scared that he will do the same what we've done. <laughs> he could. He could play F5 here, yeah, and then sink his teeth into the E4 square. That's not a bad thought by black at all. Oh. Um, maybe we should have done something about that, but oh well. Okay, let's do knight. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. I don't never play this Dutch uh, no, stone wall with white, yeah? but when I play with blacks, I really don't like it. <laughs> well, interestingly, we both have a bad bishop, but his bishop can get to e8 into h5 more easily than our bishop can get in the game. So maybe I've messed this up. Um, let's do, what do I want to do here? Let's do bishop. Yeah. So now our queen is kind of misplaced on e1. Our bishop wants to be on e1, but oh well. But I mean, okay, if, okay, okay. Okay, now we have a legitimate decision. I'm going to do knight. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can try, like, if he takes on d2, then we can try to do rook lift, yeah, with rook f3, h3, or g3. Exactly. It's not like the attack is over just because his pawn got to f5, although he does limit our options quite, quite severely. Yeah. <laughs> He's playing the same thing against us. He might be listening. Okay, let's do... Okay, do I want to get that to there? Um, let's do queen. Okay, I was thinking about something like that, but okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's say that he need to play rook f7. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because <laughs> sometimes... It... Oh, uh, okay, now that his rook cannot go to h6, I'm going to say bishop, and I want to see if Tion can understand my thought. Exactly. This is the idea that I think white, sorry, black should have played earlier, where his bishop should come to e8 and then around to h5. Okay, he did stop us from playing bishop to h4 at least immediately. That was the good news by him. Um, let's do, actually, what do I want to do? Let's do rook. Yeah, I like one. Uh, I think only is only good move. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it looks like okay. We take on d7. We've got two bishops advantage, but we don't. No, we got it, but our bishop is not so good. So. Yeah, okay. we got two bishops, but he got the advantage. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's do rook again. I think there we need to do some kind of pawn storms yeah? here. Exactly. And a rook h3 could be an attacking move. It also could be a positional move. If he ever moves his queen, we can play bishop h4 and get rid of our worst bishop. Okay, he's playing some good ideas, though. He's at least trying to make a break. Um, now, we could trade our knight for his bishop and get our bishop to h4, but our knight is so awesome, I'm not willing to do that. Um, let's do king. I mean, you won't hear, I, I hope. Yeah, and I think the viewers at home probably know what we have in mind. Okay, let's do bishop. No, oh, I but do I not. think that's not so good move, C4, yeah? I agree, because we're going to get all of the play on the king side if we get G4 in. And if black closes down the queen side, then black won't have any play. Now, black could still go after our C3 pawn. Black could still play moves like B5 and B4. Okay, instead, let's do bishop. Uh, wait. <laughs> Yeah, I'm being, and maybe you can play g4 right away, but I want to get my rook behind the pawn first. That was my idea. Okay, so I think you want to go me here, right? I'm not going to say. Okay, let's go here. <laughs> um, I would have gone the other way, so if he trades on e5, our bishop could get to h4, but I'm guessing you want to guard the c3 pawn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't see, yeah, I mean, I don't want bishop of two. Mm -hmm. Because we need to lose like rook f1, now we can do it without thinking, but then we need to do that, that, and then we lose in one tempo, minimum. You're like Picasso with the arrows there. Okay, pawn? Mm. This is where I have the easy job. I just get to say pawn, and you have to figure out the hard stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you took that way, and that pretty much stops him from playing the f4 break. Queen? Yes, it's good that he changed knight because I think this knight was a little bit annoying, yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that trade. Yeah. Uh, let's do rook. And we finally don't have this really bad bishop, but open a habit. So, huh. so his rook he... stopped. Go ahead. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Your rook stopped there, which I was surprised by. Let's do rook. Yeah, I mean, now if we ah. change all these pieces, yeah? 
then I think we are better in endgame because his bishop is not so good, yeah? So you're doing the double rook lift. I was thinking you put a rook on g1 and go for g4. Okay, let's do rook again. No, but I mean, if I do in this double rook lift, he can just play h5. <laughs> um, rook? I think. Oh, maybe I should have chosen a different piece. Oh, actually, my move's okay. I mean, my, my move. My piece is okay. Your move is okay. <laughs> my mouth is okay. Okay, queen. Yeah, some... okay. We have some ideas now. Only be quiet, please, so Oban cannot hear them. <gasps> he didn't stop it! Rook! <laughs> I we to finish up. We're finishing <laughs> off 2019 with a bang! Yeah, you do the move, I'll do the bang. Maybe you can uh, re... I want to ask a piece, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have a fan? I mean, rook takes g6. Do you have an alternate way of winning? Rook takes no. rook on g take? I don't know. You might have to be boring and play the only winning move. No, but it's not only winning moves. There are two winning moves. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I get one take back per year, and I've been saving my take back for 364 days. So, take back, queen. There we go. This is why Tihan's mad at me, because there's a certain artistry to chess, and I did not artistify. Rook. I mean, yeah, why you don't want to chop with the rook here? Yeah? Yeah, because he can already try to escape, then bishop e8, and that's... I mean, it's winning, but it's not so easy, I would say. You're exactly right. Your move is both stylistically better and fundamentally better okay very nice and look at that very nice way to end the year wow santa was good to me were you a good boy this year tihan i hope yes <laughs> it's hard to call somebody rated 2100 who is number four in his hemisphere in puzzle duel a boy but anyway it was a pleasure closing out the year with you i hope you guys had some fun we got to play a very nice final checkmate we also got to show you a little bit about the sicilian we also show you a couple of times removing the F-pawn is not bad, including this game. So Aqua Helpful, whatever the final part of your name is. Um, Aqua Helpful, let let's me see go. see if I can figure it out. Uh, device. device. Yeah. yeah. Aqua Helpful Device. That's a mouthful. You played a very nice final game. It's not easy playing against the Stonewall Dutch. But anyway, um, that was a great way to finish out the year. And Tian, will you please tell the viewers your personal channel so if people would like to subscribe to it or throw you some love, they'll know how to find you. What is your channel that they can follow you on? Uh, Peskach. Peskach. Very good. And we will type that in the chat, of course, with a link. Go support the nine-year-old. You might be helping a future grandmaster or maybe even higher. Well, Tian, I hope the year 2020 is great to you. We will schedule another show and come right back and uh, have another fun master mike and the teacher show if you want to be apprised of all of the next shows go join the chess kit official club on chess.com that's right it's like worlds collide there's a chess kit club on chess.com and that's where we'll let you know all about our future shows it was great finishing the year with you tihan say goodbye to your fans yeah, bye-bye and have all the best in the new year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. I'll see you in 2020.